Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all around the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. We are dodging tornadoes this evening in Sweet Home, Alabama. I called Paul, my producer, and I, about an hour ago. I said, Paul, I think I would have to cancel because they're saying take shelter. and But then it skirted. And uh, and so we're in the all clear, but oh my God, it is pouring outside. I can hear it even in my soundproof room. So for those of you that are in our area, hang in there. I understand that this storm is heading north. So those of you that are in the path, stay safe and, and hopefully it'll dissipate by the time it gets to you. This evening, our first caller is Genevieve Solomon. Hi, Genevieve, welcome. Hi, Julie. Hi, Hi, girl. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> I was almost going to text you and say, ah, we got to reschedule because, um, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be seeing Glenda the Good Witch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but Genevieve, everybody has a summit on trauma. And I was so honored to be a part of it. And so I asked her to come on to tell everybody about it and give you the links so that you can sign up for it and all of that. So Genevieve, give everybody the scoop on the Trauma Summit. Okay. (laughs) Thank you so much. And first of all, Julie, thank you so much for your generosity of spirit, just jumping in and saying, yeah, I want to share my knowledge and my wisdom and my healing uh, abilities, and I just so, so appreciate that. Um, And for everybody else, it's called the You Are Not Your Trauma Summit, and um, it's really aimed at helping people who who are, you know, anywhere on their journey of healing, um, all the way from just sort of noticing that they've got a lot of anxiety, depression, apathy, anger, things are just not really feeling great for them and recognizing that that those are trauma responses and uh, then moving them quickly through, okay, if you've got trauma, no no problem. There's so many ways that you can heal. We've got um, speakers who are talking about, you know, the most current neuroscience and cutting-edge therapies that are relieving millions of their anxiety, panic, and depression. Uh, We have a whole range of holistic healers who offer integrative therapies, and there are so many modalities available for clearing trauma, Um, and that, that, you know, trauma really living in the body, so we have somewhere to work with our trauma. And... um, the people offering supportive practices and how to get to know yourself better. And then finally, a new approach to life that's just full of um, more fun, more inspiration, more love, more connection. Um, I just really want people to feel inspired to to step on this journey, to continue this journey. It can, it can be um, arduous sometimes, also fascinating and fun to be healing yourself. And uh, I just want everyone to feel supported and know that there's just so much love and support for them. Why did you decide to do this? Is it something that you've been yeah. dealing with for a lot of your life? Or what oh, was the for catalyst? Sure. <laughs> for sure. I mean, my trauma was very apparent when I was young. Um, and then, you know, I healed it just to a degree to be able to function, really. And did what everybody does, which is just sort of cope. Um, But then I got really serious with my healing journey in my early 30s when I became a parent, and it's just something you can't really ignore anymore once you become a parent. And and that really opened up just a world that I didn't even really know was possible for me, a world of joy and love and connection with myself and um, I, I, you know, I became a healer because I, because I, I loved the journey of healing so much. And now I want to just share it with people, um, you know, who, you know, are, are, are struggling. 
Do you have one, I know there's endless in your summit, endless suggestions, but do you have one suggestion for people that are listening that's kind of a universal thing that that you would suggest that they can do to help them start on their healing journey? Yeah, I mean, I really do think, I know it's been said a million times, but I think that meditation is the most important starting point. And not everybody feels like they can meditate. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get started. There's um, meditation apps that allow you to uh, listen to binaural beats, which help to realign the brain and help calm your nervous system. And you can listen to the sound, and it's a very calming, easy, enjoyable way to, to meditate. Um, if you can, uh, if you can get to um, a Dharma class, they can teach you how to meditate in a contemplative manner, which is what I love to do and what I love to teach. Um, there's, you know, just simple breathing meditation, um, even movement meditation. So just getting a way to really, um, to really calm your mind and get into your body and feel yourself. Um, that's my suggestion. And not feeling like you have to do any of it alone. There are so many teachers, so many apps so much support available so I would not recommend sitting on a cushion and fur- furrowing your brow and saying I need to meditate but just really reaching out immediately for the support that's available to you and, and try to start a meditation practice and there's lots of information for free that are that's online oh, and on YouTube sure. and it, it doesn't need to cost you anything. I find with meditation, Genevieve, it's not so much about sitting still and not having thoughts. I think what meditation is about two things and see I'll be eager to see if you agree with me on this. Number one, it's that our thoughts don't have any meaning unless we give them meaning. And so in meditation, our thoughts come in and then we watch them go away. And then more thoughts come in and then you kind of let them go. So that's number one. It teaches us to be able to help control our thoughts. But I think the other thing that it does too is those nanoseconds that are in between the thoughts are where all the relaxation and everything happens. And you add a bunch of those nanoseconds together, even if it only equals a couple of minutes when you're beginning, that's really where the body has the opportunity to relax and repair. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. I think that there's many ways to meditate. And I think that... um, you know, a lot of times uh, women have a hard time meditating because they have a hard time. They, they we have a hard time just um, calming everything down, and we think that we need to just stop our mind. And what we can actually do is let get in touch with the flow of life within us. So to be to be um, connected to the energy and to put your focus there is another good way and, and and to have a point of focus helps calm the mind as well and it gets mm. you in touch with the energies in your body interesting okay well terrific well how can people find out about the summit how can they sign up for it what's the cost all of those details oh thank you so much for asking. It is youarenotyourtrauma.org. It's a free event. It's a 14-day day, um, event. Each day we'll release two interviews, and they'll be there for 24 hours, and uh, you can catch them hopefully each day. If you want to buy a VIP pass, you'll have access to all of the, all of the interviews, lifetime access after the um, summit stops or is over. And you'll also get a VIP workbook with guiding questions to help you go deeper and really work with all of the ideas that are coming up. And also a uh, guide to empathic empowerment, which I put together and it's for turning your sensitivity into your superpower. It's especially for empaths, but most um, people can probably really relate to uh, what I present in that in that guide. So I hope you'll join us 
And uh, we also have a Facebook group open for you to join and be part of the conversation. We'll be talking each day about uh, all of the interviews. Who would you suggest this could help? Is it just certain people or is it open just regardless of age and gender and all of that? Who would oh, be somebody that could benefit from it? I think anybody can benefit from this um, because if you are dealing with um, deep trauma and you don't know how to handle it, you will be um, introduced to some therapies that you can seek out. If you have already started on your healing journey, but you're feeling a little frustrated or stuck, you'll be introduced to more healings and practices to help you get unstuck. And if you really feel like you're far on your journey and you're ready to really step into your creative power, you're going to meet uh, teachers who are going to be able to teach you how to do that. So basically, it can help anybody, whether you feel like you have trauma or not. So, everybody check it out. Sign up for it. We'll be posting it on my social media channels, too. Genevieve, thanks so much for joining us. Stay with us, everybody. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Let's go to the phones again. And our next caller is Anitra. Hi, Anitra. Hi, are you there? Hi, 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 hi. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I sure can. Where are you located? Hi. I'm in Masket, Oman. Masket, Oman? Where is that? It's in the Middle East. Okay. All right. I'm not I'm calling all the way it. from the Middle East, and I, oh I'm... My thank you so much for taking my call. You're welcome. You got a question for me? Yes, please. I uh, was uh, unable to reach my father on time because of the coronavirus, and he passed. So I've been with him through everything. So I was not being, but this this moment I missed. So I was wondering if you could connect with him. Yes, yes. When did he pass, Anitra? On December thirtieth, two thousand twenty. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, all right. Thank you. Well, tell me his first name. Srini Basan. Okay. Srini. They used to call him Srini. Shrini. Okay, terrific. So he's standing next to you. When we talk about our loved ones or anybody that's deceased, they, their spirit comes right in and stands right next to us. So did you have a question for him? Yeah, how was his uh, transition? And I've, I've been with him through everything. Why did he choose to go without me? I would have been there. Yeah. Because he's saying it, he felt that it was easier for you to not be there. He said it was smooth as silk. When you said how was his transition, he said it was as smooth as silk. He said he's around you all the time. He said that there's no reason for you to be sad because he's around you more now than he was when he was alive. Because he can be with you no. anytime, any place. And, uh, right. yeah, it... it Something that you can do to help you with your grief, since you weren't there, Anitra, is write him a letter. Write him a letter. And right. say everything that you want to say with him. And then when you're done, you know, cry, be angry, do whatever. And then when you're done with it, burn it. And then sprinkle the ashes out in your garden or... Or in, in a garden, garden somewhere. Or in a garden somewhere. And then right. it'll it'll release it for you and it will go to him in the energy. I will do so that. So it's, it's really helpful to people when they do that. It's amazingly healing. So let him know that yeah, you I were will. mortified that you weren't able to be with him. Let him know how much you love him. Let him know how much you miss him. I mean, anything that you want to say to him, anything that was left unsaid, just go ahead and let him know and write it down. And and instead of just thinking of writing it, when we actually write it, it helps move the energy out of our body and release it into the ethers. I will do that. And okay. Any message that he has for me? 
no reason to be sad. He's around you more now than he was when he was alive, is what he's saying. So you know how to talk to him. You just say something to him in your head. You think of him. That pulls him in. You say something to him in your head, and he's going to answer you. It's going to come in like a thought in your head. It's going to come in like a thought in your head. And then okay. I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute you because I'm getting playback. So it's going to come in like it's a thought in your head, as fast as you can snap your fingers. That's going to be him talking to you. If you think about it for more than a couple of seconds, that's going to be your brain talking to you. So give it a try. And remember, spirits are really literal. So you want to be specific if you're asking for advice. The other thing, too, is the more you do this in nature, the more validation you're going to get for the answers you receive. And then the more you do that, the more you're going to just feel comfortable with this and it's going to be second nature. So consider doing that. But write the letter. Anybody that's listening, if you aren't able to be with somebody that you love when they pass, write them a letter and then burn it and spread the ashes. And and all that energy goes to them. They get that information. So it's a great way to do that. All righty. Thanks for calling. Okay, let's go to Miss Patty next. Hi, Patty. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm okay. We're going to have a big rainstorm up here. Yeah, it's pouring. I'm, I'm, in a sound, I'm in a soundproof room, room, but I can still hear it pounding on my roof. So, yeah, and you're in Queens. Thank you for that. You got a question for me? Yeah, um, the last couple of months have been very weird. Um, uh, I was diagnosed, I was tested positive for COVID twice, once in December. Um, that I was feeling somewhat symptoms, but then a month later, uh, the, uh, like uh, the we- uh, the second week in January, I tested positive, but I tested negative on the same day. So mm-hmm. I think that's a false positive, right? Um, right. But yeah. the last couple of months, I've been having adrenal rushes. Mm-hmm. But it's more now. It's gotten more to the point that I can't get myself so excited because it will cause my heart to raise. Mm-hmm. Now, 25 years ago, I had an overactive thyroid. And I'm having, like, the same symptoms again, like uh, night sweats, uh, palpitations, um, anxiety. But I also have uh, cortis- I have adrenal problems, too. Uh, because I have low sodium at times. So it's like, now I know you're going to say it's all about hormones, but I'm just concerned right now, is it um, psychological that this is my adrenals or no. is it my thyroid or it's just my mind? It's your hormones. <laughs> you're right. You're psychic, Patty. You're psychic. How about that? You've been hanging around me so long now like, that you're psychic. Hormones, which hormones? Not the it's, female it's, or is it? Is it thyroid? All of them. Is it, uh, all of them. Cortisol? They all wow. act together in a symphony with one another. When mm-hmm. one or two of them are out of whack, it gets the rest of them out of whack. Go get a hormone panel done. Talk to a pharmacy in your area that's a compounding pharmacy and say, who's doing bioidentical hormone replacement therapy? Go get your blood tested. And then they'll do that. In the meantime, I've been working on your adrenals. Your adrenals look fried. But it's because of what you've been through, and it's really all of your hormones together. So you'll get them regulated. Just go I, see I, somebody I, who who knows what they're talking about on that. Stay with us, everybody. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we'll see who's next. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. Our next one up is Miss Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, Julie. I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. Terrific. How are things over there? Well, we're you're getting the storm and we're getting the wind, so it's howling here. But uh, all is well. It feels like spring today, so um, oh. it, it's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I noticed our red buds are starting to bloom. Those are the first trees that come out down here around our house. And I have we'll, dear friends. We'll get them soon. I have yeah. dear friends flying in from uh, Minneapolis 
tomorrow afternoon and so i they've got a bunch of snow on the ground and i said oh the red blood red buds are blooming and and the my friend mary her her husband said he's gonna bring shorts i said he can walk around in a speedo if he wants we don't care it'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> he said anything above like you know 40 degrees is gonna feel like a heat wave so uh you know a heat wave. that's right they're gonna go gosh it's too hot here yeah, oh, she told him that. She said, I'm going to tell friend. him he can bring his Speedo. And I said, does he have a Speedo? She said, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so, anyways. Well, you got a question for oh, me? Fun, fun. I do. So, uh, this is a medical question. In the beginning, beginning of November, I got my uh, booster of COVID vaccination. And it really put me into a spin. I ended up in the ER two days later with heart palpitations huge swollen glands on my right side where I got the shot. Mm -hmm. To this day, my right shoulder is still very, very sore. At night, it feels like someone's hammering a nail into my shoulder. And um, it's just very odd that that's taken, you know, all this time. And I'm wondering if there's, if you see something physical, physical or spiritual associated with this shoulder that's quite disagreeable um and that that was my that was my medical concern uh for you tonight julie okay all right let me get you on my radar susan how this works for those of you that are first time listeners is i raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit because we're all spirits attached to a body having a human experience and i learned how to do all this woo woo stuff and teach people now how to do all the stuff that i do (laughs) and so susan i'm going to close my eyes i'm going to watch a laser beam come from my body here in birmingham and it'll hook into you in charlotte and then i'll have a hologram of you in my mind's eye and i'm going to Something will be identified, and then immediately thereafter, there will be some type of energetic healing that will happen very quickly. I'm very descriptive about what I see, as you know, and sometimes my analogies are hilarious, but that's truly how the images come into me. And they're intended to give you, Susan, a frame of reference for what I'm seeing. And it's spirit working through me and with me to help you heal yourself. Nobody heals anybody else. We all heal ourselves. Those of us that are healers or medical providers, we help the person heal themselves. So I think the crazy analogies that I get, Susan, come in because they give us a frame of reference for this energy healing. And that's something that we're not familiar with it. So that's why I get all these wild visions and there are times when i'll see something and i'll say to spirit really you want me to tell her that her elbow looks like whipped cream or something crazy but you know i just i just well, i have a good sense of get. humor so um... exactly well and i think i think spirit, that's part of it too will, uh, is talk to your spirit yeah, and when we're working with spirit, spirit's pure love, and it's fun, and you're supposed to, we're supposed to have fun with this, even if it's something really serious, because everything can be healed. And so I don't, you know, it is fun. Okay, here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading up to you through Hotlanta, right, coming Atlanta, and then heading north from there. All right, got you, shooting, shooting energy. It looks to me like you've got something going on on the top of that shoulder on the right side. You've got a, the inf, it's inflamed, but but it's more of a dramatic inflammation on the top. Does it seem to hurt more on the top, Susan, than elsewhere? It's a whole thing just so sore uh, you can't really tell. You know, the, the hot part and the sore part is actually, I, I keep saying the injection part. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I don't have a limited range of motion. I think I have some weakness, and certainly pain radiates into that right neck, left neck. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's that side shoulder um, mm-hmm. that's just so um, irritable. Did and you when you went to the emergency room? Did they say anything about cellulitis? Mm. No, uh, and I'm not, if they did, it doesn't ring a bell, um, 
there was a few things going on. Uh, again, my chest tightness, contraction, and then these like golf ball size lymph nodes mm-hmm. with fatty tissue around them um, mm-hmm. was under my right armpit. Yeah. So my yeah. my my lymphatic system was just went overboard. Right. Was trying to clear out what you had in, had had injected into you that your body didn't like. Okay, right. so it looks almost like cellulitis to me. I'm watching. I can see where it's really inflamed. I've got anti-inflammatory energy on it, Susan. I am also seeing antibiotic energy, which is a kind of a fuchsia color energy. And energy just looks like a fog to me. Imagine like a red fog over body parts. But this is fuchsia. So you've got a little bit of, I think you've got some cellulitis going on in there as well. You've got a little bit of an infection happening where it's really hot. So I'm getting that calmed down. Uh, Okay. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a detox. I'm doing a heavy metal detox and uh, getting that stuff handled in your body so that your body's not having an immune response to it. What can Susan do to help her heal from this? Do you take glutathione? No. I'm writing that down. Get some glutathione. And uh, it's, I think it's an amino acid, Susan, but it helps the body clear toxins. And then look up heavy metal oh, detox. Okay. I'm doing it on you right now. Okay. Imagine there's two giant U-shaped magnets. They're joined in the middle. They're going up and down your body. They're surrounding your body, and then they turn a quarter of a turn, and then they go up oh. and down your body, and they pull out metallic particulates. Okay. The other thing is cruciferous vegetables are really good for heavy metal detox. And also and Epsom what, salt. What is that Epsom exactly? Salt baths. Um, Cruciferous would be like broccoli the, and cauliflower. Um, okay. It's broccoli so and funny. Cauliflower. I'm so addicted to broccoli, right? Yeah. yeah broccoli and kale. That's like, why. I can't get enough of. Okay. I would, okay. I would uh, take it easy on the kale. Do the broccoli. Do the broccoli. Okay. Do Brussels sprouts. Do stuff like that. So okay. you can help detox but i i would do an internet search on heavy metal detox and see what you can do vitamin c is really helpful as well ester c yeah i like because it's buffered so it won't hurt your stomach take zinc with it okay take a thousand of c 50 of zinc okay and d3 is really important too for the immune system but you're, that'll help your body detox and tons of water. Yeah, 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 good. Okay. So between the healing and between all that other stuff, hopefully that'll help you feel a lot better. You're very kind. Thank you so much, Julie. And you be you're well. Welcome. You be well in Alabama, too. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, good Susan. Night. Take okay. care. Bye. I appreciate it. Okay, let's go to uh, Diane next. Hi, Diane. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Uh, I'm from Chicago, and we're being hit with a lot of snow. Uh Uh Uh-oh. (laughs) Uh-oh. That's that's where Paul is at the radio station. He didn't even tell me because, you know, I took took over the conversation Uh with, we're dodging tornadoes down here. So, anyways, (laughs) well, how much snow are you guys supposed to get? Um, up to seven inches where I am. Oh, oh, geez. So that's not too bad. We've had a lot worse recently. I know. My brother lives in Naperville, so I always hear from him that he's been out with the snow blower. It's what when it gets <laughs> treacherous is the ice, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. hang in there. I hope I hope it uh, ends soon and melts fast for you. Thank you. You got a question for me? Yes. Um, my mom, she's 88. She's in a, a nursing home. She was actually doing very, very well until just recently. It's like something happened with her gut, and she hasn't been eating much at all for about 10 days. And uh, okay. she just wants to sleep. She's very weak. Um, 
she, of course, wants to be with my dad, but she didn't seem to, you know, be transitioning until just recently. And I'm wondering if you can tell me if, you know, what, what is the process of her uh, transitioning right now, if that is what she's going through. Yeah, yeah. Let me get her on my radar. What's her first name, Diane? Joan. 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 That's my late sister's name. Joan. All right, here we go. I'm hooking into you and from you to your mama. Yeah. All right, I'm going to hold you over for the break, Diane, okay. and then we'll get to it. She's in phase four of the 12 phases of transition, but we'll talk to her and see what she has to say. Okay. Stay with us, everybody. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll find out what Diane's mom has to say. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking with Diane about her mom, Joan. Diane, are you still with us? Yes. Okay. She's in phase four of the 12 phases of transition. Do you know what that is? Do you know what the 12 phases of transition is? Okay. I, I have As, read the book. I don't remember exactly what phase four is. Okay, but you, you've heard about the 12 phases of transition. For those of you yeah. that haven't heard of it, it's a configuration where at the end of life we're surrounded by angels and the spirits of deceased loved ones and deceased pets. And it's a different configuration that, that those angels and spirits go through. And I can scan somebody anywhere in the world and see what phase of transition they're in. So she's in the early phases. Diane so let's ask her some questions Joan are you ready to go yes are you in pain she's saying not really not really what do you need she's saying just to sleep she's saying she's very tired oh yeah you're right yeah. just yeah. to sleep that's all she was is just to sleep and that's very common <laughs> Diane have the nurses told you that or her caregivers yes yeah that at the yeah. end of life and that they want to sleep, and they and their food intake really, really slows down. Yep. And they're just so tired. Exactly. That's, but exactly what she keeps saying to me is, I just want to sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's what she's saying, yeah. too. So get people in there to see her who want to see her okay. at the end of her life. And also... To find out what phase she's in, Diane, all you have to do is just ask, what phase of transition is my mom in? You'll hear a number in your head. It'll come in right away. And if you go to my website, AskJulieRyan.com, there's a button there where you can download the chart that has all the phases on it. And I always suggest to people, Diane, put it on your phone. Download it and save it on your phone. And then just ask, what phase of transition is my mom in? And then you'll have that chart, and then you can refer to it. And if she starts progressing through the phases fairly quickly, Diane, you'll know that the end is really uh, near. And and then you can get other people to come in, because I don't know if your family's all there with you close by, but oftentimes people have to take time off work or travel vast distances sometimes. You know, they right. got to fly in yeah. from someplace. My daughter will have to come in from Iowa to see her. Yeah, so I think I would, okay. if I was you, I would go ahead and, and start having people come in to see her oh. so that they okay. can. And then just just see what what phase she's in. And they can go they can go in and out of the phases. They can. She could be four one day. She could be eight the next day. She could be two the next day but that's why that chart's so helpful they can move back around but her wanting to sleep all the time and not eating is very typical at the end of somebody's life it's just the body just shutting down starting to starting to get ready so okay i hope that helps you You are so welcome thank you that helps okay look for little miracles along the way there will be plenty fall And, uh, and okay. um, you know, just just follow your gut. And if you think, okay, I need to go see mom, go see your mom. Just follow that. Okay. 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 Thanks for calling. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Let's go to Helen next. Hi, Helen. Hello, Julie. I'm How from Galveston. 
Terrific. Oh, well, we were talking Pardon before me? the show started. Yeah. We were talking before the show started about last year when you guys got that snow and uh, didn't have power. That <laughs> was awful for you, wasn't it? Oh, goodness. It was It was beyond for the entire <sighs> state of Texas. But Oh, geez. Anyway, so oh. far, so good this year. Good, good. Well, you, do you have a question for me? Spring, so. Yeah, so my father died in April. His name was Arthur. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if you can pick up any kind of message from Arthur. Do you have a question for him, Helen? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Um, Yeah, just for time's mm -hmm. sake, I always say, you know, what's a question? Because, you know, does he have anything to say to Helen? Well, Uh, does he have anything to say to Helen? Well, you have sisters. He's saying get together with your sisters. Do you guys all get together and do like yes. a sister trip? We we talk a lot, the sisters okay. and I. But do you get together and do a trip? He's saying do a sister trip where you get together and just go. Well, just one of my with sisters, sisters has it. We, yeah, well, one of my sisters that you know, but I won't go into that right now, um, She's a house in North Carolina. I have a house in North Carolina. Another of our sisters comes to North Carolina. And the fourth sister, we could try to get her to North Carolina. But maybe that's what he's saying. Try to get no, the he, four sisters to North Carolina. He wants you to go on a trip someplace. Not go to one of your homes. Just go on a trip. You know, maybe okay. you go to, I don't know, Tahiti for a week. Right, or that's you kind go of to, funny. Hold or on. Or you go to Hold Florida. On. That's kind of funny. Listen, stop, stop. Because we, in the mail yesterday, I just got a brochure that says, Off the Beaten Path, Travel Ideas and Inspiration. And I, my husband doesn't really like to travel, and so I put it aside to look at it, and I was thinking, who would I go on one of these trips with? Hello, my sisters. Your sisters. He's saying take a sister's trip. He's calling it a sister's trip. He's said it four times. Take a sister's trip. You guys get away. Just be together. Don't go to your... If you go to one of your homes, you're going to be playing hostess. He wants you to go stay in a hotel. Uh, Go have fun. Just be together. (laughs) That's That's funny, too, because he loved fabulous hotels, five star all the way. There you go. Well, so so Tahiti came in all you know right off the bat. So that tells me something tropical. Mm-hmm. Do you do you want the girls to go someplace tropical? He's saying, well, yeah, someplace warm because because none of them like snow. So he's saying, don't go That's where it's true. snowing. Yeah, don't like don't go to Aspen <laughs> or someplace. He's saying go someplace warm. He's saying go at the end of April, before it gets crazy hot. Mhm. That just. That doesn't give you much time, Miss Helen. You better get on the stick, girl. Planning. <laughs> no, this this is true. Yeah. That's true. But that's so, um, I mean, very apropos. Oh. All right, so can do I you, throw out a question about, I had a cat, huh? Do you have brothers? Sorry? Do you have brothers? Yes, yeah, four. Okay. He's saying four no brothers. boys. No boys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably a good idea. <laughs> oh, how funny. Well, let us know where you end up and uh, and have fun. And if you if you go to Tahiti or someplace tropical, then uh, send me a picture and I'll post it online on all my social media. And I'll say, Helen called into the show and her, her dad, her late dad said to go to Tahiti. And look, here she is. All right, everybody, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we'll see who's next. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show, so stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. We do this show every Thursday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. The call-in number is 667-770-1476, and the access code is 483-620-POUND. Now, this information is available on my website, AskJulieRyan.com, and in the show notes. You can download the show anywhere you get your podcasts, and we're also on YouTube and Alexa. Please remember to subscribe, 
and leave a review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash Julie, ratethispodcast.com forward slash Julie. And then that's going to enter, enter you into a drawing for our free session with me, valued at $200. And I give one away the first Thursday of each month. And it says a thank you to all of you that are listening, number one, and being part of this community. And number two, I also give it away because I know sometimes... $200 is a lot of money to a lot of people, and you want to do an hour session, but money's tight. So it's a, some little thing that I can do, and I, I appreciate you leaving the review. So it's a gift that I can give. So rate this podcast.com forward slash Julie. Also, share this show with your friends and and your family members, especially if you hear something on there that pertains to them and something that they're going through. And then that lets them have another way to sometimes help heal and get information from deceased loved ones and pets and past lives. You know, I am a buffet of psychicness. So it makes it fun. Colin details can also be found on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest at Ask Julie Ryan. We'll always post a reminder the day of the show with all of the call in numbers. While you're on AskJulieRyan.com, be sure to sign up for my weekly newsletter. It's a question somebody submitted online along with my answer. And you can also schedule an appointment with me there. Just uh, click on the schedule. Uh, a book an appointment, I think is what it says, and then we'll we'll pick out a date and time that works with your schedule and works with my schedule, and then I'll have you for a whole hour, which is so much fun. I always have such a blast talking to people uh, all day long, pretty much every day I get to do that. So also on my class, the big class, the Angelic Attendant Training, AAT, I've got six spots left. They're in October. That's for the whole year. April's full, July's full, October I've got four, I've got six spots left. I only teach it once a quarter. I do have a new training that I hope to have out by the end of the month, beginning of March. It's called Angels and Enlightenment Training. That's going to be online, self-paced, and, uh, and it, I think it's going to be really good. It's going to be about the 12 phases of transition and how to talk with spirit. And then the cool thing about it is we're going to have practice sessions that you can can uh, join in on uh, about eight times a week is what I've got set up now. And graduates of the angelic attendant training, my big training, are going to be facilitating that. So it creates this amazing atmosphere for you to practice after you do the training and take the class. So watch for that. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know once it's ready to go. It's way more work than I thought it was going to be to put this together, but it's it's going to be really special. And I, I want to I want to have it be something that's going to be really valuable to you and, and work and, and something I can be proud of. So, you know, I'm just being, I'm just being persnickety about how, how everything is put together on it. So I'll keep you posted on that. Okay. This week, our call, our question is from Stephanie, and Stephanie lives in Eureka, California. And she asked, hi, Julie, right before Christmas, I had to put down one of my horses. Chinook hurt himself and the injury wasn't recoverable. He'd been with me since 2004 and passed at the age of 26. The decision to euthanize Chinook is like a knife in my heart daily. In addition, my other horse Ruger hasn't been the same since Chinook left us. I can feel and see how much Ruger misses Chinook. His calls for him are less frequent, and I get the feeling that Ruger may be angry at me for what happened because he's different with me now. Ruger used to greet me daily, and now he doesn't acknowledge me unless I walk directly in front of him. He just stares off like he's waiting for Chinook to show up. Is there a way you can tell Ruger I miss Chinook too and that he's no longer in pain? They were together for 24 years, so I know Ruger is missing him. They were so beautiful together. Ruger is a black and white paint, and Chinook was a brown, white, and black paint. That's a type of horse. I had to look that up. Paint. I figured it's what it was. And then I looked it up, and you can look it up, and they're beautiful. They were best friends. Thank you for your consideration from Stephanie. Here's my response. Hi, Stephanie. My condolences on Chinook's passing. 
Many of us find losing a beloved pet is just about as painful as losing a human loved one. And for those of you that haven't gone through that yet, when you lose a pet, the, the grief is so intense with a pet that I think a lot of us feel like, oh my God, this hurts almost as much as when I lost my whomever loved one who's a human. And you, and you almost feel a little guilty about it. But you think about it, your pet is with you all the time, oftentimes more than perhaps a, a sibling or a parent if you're grown and have your own home. But that pet's always with you. So I think that has a lot to do with it. Okay, back to my response. Research shows horses actually do grieve. Equine Wellness Magazine says, quote, Some horses show easily observable expressions of grief, such as waiting for days by the gate through which their buddy disappeared, exhibiting reduced social interaction, or appearing depressed. Their eyes may be lackluster, their usual expressions of joy may fall by the wayside, and even food intake may be reduced. Sometimes they'll just be a little little quieter overall, which can easily go unnoticed. These signs of grieving are most likely to become apparent shortly after the loss, end quote. Speaking of equine grief, it's interesting to note that wild horses have a goodbye ritual they perform when one of their fellow horses is dying. Similar to people coming to visit a human loved one at the end of their life, wild horses come in families and take turns individually sharing breath with the dying horse. I didn't know that. I just learned that when I was doing research to find out if horses really grieve to answer this question. And uh, I I thought that was amazing that that's a thing that wild horses do. And there's lots of, if you go on my website, AskJulieRyan.com and you click on this blog, there's a link to the article about the goodbye ritual of wild horses. And, you know, elephants come to say goodbye to people when somebody dies, too. There's all kinds of stories about wild elephants coming to the home of their caregiver sometimes when they pass. It's like they're paying their respects to the family. It's amazing in the animal kingdom how grieving and grief and and rituals are there if we just really pay attention to them. I went on to say, among other strategies, Catherine Haupt, DVM, PhD, physiologist and animal behaviorist at the New York State College of Veterinary Medicine at Cornell University says, quote, Behavioral treatment is aimed at getting the grieving horse interested in its environment again and may be assisted with medical and pharmaceutical options to treat anxiety, depression, not eating, etc. End quote. To get some personalized information for you, I spoke telepathically to both Chinook and Ruger. Chinook wants you to know how much he appreciates your euthanizing him. He said his pain was tremendous. He used that word, tremendous. And that when his spirit left his body, he felt like Pegasus. He even showed me an image of him flying upwards, just like the mythological winged horse. That was great. He showed me this picture of him flying with wings. He also said he visits you in your dreams. When communicating, again telepathically, with Ruger, he said he misses Chinook very much, understands why you had Chinook put down, and now just feels lonely most of the time. If possible, Ruger would like for you to get another horse and ask that you get a younger horse who will be around for a long time. Hope this information comforts you. So, Miss Stephanie from Eureka, California, God bless you. Sounds like you got a, you may have another horse coming to live with you in Ruger and know that Chinook is always around you. His spirit, you just think of him, he comes right in, and it sounds like he's coming to you in your dreams. Oftentimes, our deceased loved ones and pets come to us in our dreams because our brains are at rest and they can get through to us then. Whereas if we're awake and we're really feeling blue and still grieving, our vibration is too low for spirit to communicate with us. It's easier when our mind is relaxed and we're not controlling it because we're asleep. So that's why spirits often come in dreams. So hope that helps. And uh, thanks for sending in that question. Okay, 
Let's go back to the phones, and our next caller is Pina. Hi, Pina. Hi, Julie. Hi. How are you, girl? Good. How are you? Thanks for getting my call. You are most welcome. Please tell everybody where you're located. Sure. I'm in New Jersey, South Jersey, close to Philly. Okay. You got a quick question for me? Yes. Um, I'm calling in reference to my dog, Leo. He's a uh, Weimariner, silver gray yeah. Weimariner, 70 pounds. Yeah. Um, I just want to know if you can communicate with him and let me know how can I help him more and how can I make him happier. Okay. All right. I'm very to, concerned. I'm going to have to hold you over for the break. I hear my music. Mr. Paul's playing my music. So stay with us, everybody. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk with the Weimaraner and see what he has to say. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show, so stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. Before the break, we were talking with Pina about her dog, Leo. Pina, you had a question you wanted us to ask Leo? Yes. Um, sometimes I can't read him, so I don't know what he's trying to tell me. He seems concerned at times, so I just want to make him, make him happier. You know, he's my 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 oh, my everything. Yeah, he's your baby. Okay, so is there anything in particular that you want to ask him about? Is he uh, healthy? Is he? Does he seem yeah, sad? Yeah, he's healthy. I mean, but what? He's, yes, he seems sad at times, and sometimes he gets nauseous. But well, he's been nauseous since you know he's, he's a puppy, and they already told me what it is. So I'm not sure what else can I do to make him happy. What's the what are the doctors saying? Um, it was because he was eating too fast, um, so they um, told me to adjust the amount of food and water when he eats throughout the day. And I'm not sure he's thirsty, he wants more food, he wants more water, where he wants to sleep. You know, I try a lot. New blankets, okay. toys, I don't know. Oh, oh my gosh. He sounds like he's pampered like crazy. Do you leave the food out for him or do you just give it to him no. certain times of the day? Yes, certain times of the day he eats, yes. Okay. He's asking that you just leave the food out because the reason why he eats so fast is because he's afraid he's not going to get enough. And when you just leave it out, then he can eat when he wants and not eat and then stop when he's full. So that's why he seems to be so anxious about it because he's afraid that there's a limited supply. Have you tried that, Pina? Uh, no, not really. No. Uh -uh. Okay. Give it a try mm -hmm. and see what happens. Uh, we uh, can he I, tell you time, where he wants to sleep? In your bed. <laughs> That's a big dog. Oh, to be in your bed. Adorable. Is, yes. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. Does he sleep with you, or does he sleep in uh -huh. his bed? Does he have a bed? He has a bed. Yeah. He has a bed, but he'd rather be in your bed with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Under the you. blankies, he's saying, unless it's hot, and then he'll sleep on the top of the blankets. But he's more interested in the food. Try leaving his food out for a few days and see if that works better. Our dog, we've always we okay. always leave the food out, and she eats when she's hungry, and she stops when she's full. It's not a big deal. So you may want to okay, try that okay. and see what happens. So I, I hope will. that helps. But, sure. you know, you may have to get a bigger bed with that big horse dog in the bed with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Thanks thank for you so calling. Much, Julie. You bet. Take care. Bye-bye. No problem. Oh, how funny is that? Yeah, you know, they're big babies. All right, let's go to Michelle next. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Julie. Thank you so much for taking my call. You're I um, had spoken to you about my dad who comes through. I feel he comes through quite often. It's his birthday today. He'd be 88 something. Happy oh. birthday through you and me. Happy birthday, yeah. Dad. And he comes, thank you. He comes through on my speakers, and you had confirmed that. 
just want to make sure I'm really reading into this. I guess I want some validation from you. I feel like I'm able to connect with him. Of course, my family thinks I'm crazy, but I guess that's why I'm calling it for validation. On Sunday, we were celebrating my mom's 82nd birthday, and as I was putting on my makeup and getting ready, I see my light in my bathroom flickering, and they don't need they don't need bulbs. So I wanted confirmation that it's him because I started talking to them. And someone would look at me and say I'm crazy. But I'd say, you know, Dad, if that's really you, can you please flicker the light, the first one? And, and this was going on for at least five minutes. So yeah. am I nuts, or is this? Or I'm not. No, 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 no. You're not Hello? nuts. You're, you've you've got it right. Oh, so uh, Michelle, oh, I do? How, so it is. Yeah, oh, yeah. When you when something like that happens, and we immediately have a thought in our head, like you immediately were thinking, "Oh my God, this is my dad." playing with my lights that's correct you you always hear me say it's the first it is, thing right? that comes in your head and then right. when we right. when that's we think of, yeah when we think about it then that's our brain kicking in but no it's always boom as fast as you can snap your fingers first thing that comes in your head right. so then you said dad if it's you like do I'm it again good at this. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, and he, he flickered it again, and like it go. went on like for three like three or four times. Different right. bulbs were flickering. Right. But if I tell right. my daughter to come in and watch, he, he stops. <laughs> yeah. It's like because, I I'm able to do this. Because you're vibrating at a high enough level, Michelle, that he can communicate with you. When somebody else comes in right. who doesn't believe it, they're coming in and mm-hmm. they That's are in a lower vibration because it's fear. They're like, oh, God, you know, Correct. like, even though it's her right. granddad, there's a spirit and I welcome, in the house. And I welcome him. Exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. I thought he was in her room because she, she said he's in her room. I don't know. If she said there's something in her room. I did sage in there. I spoke to whoever was in there. I mean, sometimes her Xbox will go on. You know, I don't know if it's my dad in her room or something else. If there's anything even in there, you it's your dad, and it's it's an it's aunt. To, it, it, and it's an aunt. It sounds an like aunt. Gretchen or Gretel or something with a G. Do you have an aunt? Did he really? have an aunt? It's a. It's uh-huh. look up in your family tree. It's aunt. Gweta. I had a Gweta. That's it. Maybe a Gweta. His sister That's was it. Gweta, or his That's mother. It. His mother was Gweta. That's it, it. His mom. I yep. wonder why she would go to my daughter's room, though. Why is she there? That's because she's watching over your daughter. Our loved ones are all around us, even if we didn't know them. Yeah, I heard Greta. Wow. I heard I heard Greta Gretchen. Yeah, Greta. Like Gretel. Greta. Oh, that's it. Greta. That's it. Definitely Greta. That was his mom. Oh my that's God, it. that's so cool. <laughs> I, yeah. So great. I'm not crazy. Thank you're you not so crazy. much for the validation. You bet. I love you, tell Julie. Every, Bye. Tell everybody where you're located. Where are you located? Oh, I'm in Florida. Sunrise, Florida. All right. Sorry. Okay. Thanks, right. Michelle. I love that. Yeah, when a thought comes in your head, pay attention to that. That's spirit communicating with you. Stay with us, everybody. We're going to take another quick break, and we'll we'll get more callers on in, in just a minute. You're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Our next caller is Jeffrey. Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, Jeffrey. 740 area code. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. This is actually M. <laughs> Hi, M. You don't sound like a Jeffrey. <laughs> no. Um, so I'm an Ohio girl, uh, currently in Florida, and I'm calling about my mom that's listening right now in Ohio. Oh, terrific. Where in Ohio? Um, southeastern Ohio. Okay. All right. Well, terrific. Um, well, you, so have a que- you have a question? Yeah. I do. See, um, right around when the pandemic started, um, vitiligo started showing up on her skin. And I just want to see what that is. Is it another underlying issue that's going on with her? Um, just, I don't know if you can look into that. Okay, tell everybody what Benilago is. 
Uh, vitiligo is, uh, her skin is losing its pigmentation, and so she has patches throughout her body that are, are white now. Um, right, right. She is, uh, yeah, she is usually pretty tan, and so she's lost the pigment in um, a large portion of her skin. Okay. Didn't Michael Jackson have that, um, I think he did. I don't know if, I don't know. I know that there is a, um, I think her name is Winnie Harlow. She's a famous um, supermodel. And she Model. Has- yes. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I've seen her. She's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's your mom's name? Connie. Connie. All right. Hi, Mom. What, I'm an- Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I'm doing is I'm going to connect from you, from me to you and you to her. So you're going to be this. Okay. The, the wheel, and we're going to be the spokes. So here we go. Here I All come right, I'm the middle you man. You're the middle. You're like tiddlywinks. Did you ever Did you ever see those? Are you old enough to remember those? It's like a, a round no, I'm block. I'm just a, I'm a little spring chicken. It's a, it's a round block, and it's got holes in it, and then you put spokes in it, and then you can build different things with it. So that's oh, what this you. reminds me of. Okay, got you heading north, going to Connie. Okay, Connie. This is going to sound so random, um, but okay. has she, have her get her uric acid checked, her uric acid okay. levels. We think that those are just connected with gout, and they're not. What I'm getting is it's okay. it's they're probably going to tell you it's a quote autoimmune disease that's mm-hmm. causing this. That's what she heard, yeah. Mhm. And it's a it's a high level of uric acid. So uric acid, uric acid. we think mm-hmm. of from spinach and other things. It's it's primarily sugar. So stay away from stuff okay. with sugar in it. And uh, oh, and, Julie, she's not going to want to hear that. Uh, yeah. That's what's going on, is it's too much sugar, so her body's just having a an issue with too much sugar. Does she crave sugar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I got it from her, too. I know. I, listen. So now, is this you, something that's hereditary, or is this just based off of just her sugar? This is not no, something this that is we a, all need to be worried about? Okay. Well, everybody needs to be worried about it because it's sure. environmental. Sure. Yeah. And sugar's just yeah. so inflammatory. So have her get her insulin resistance check, checked and also okay. uric acid. Uric acid, okay. Uric acid. And there's a doctor that's written a lot about uric acid. His name's David Perlmutter M. It's P, I believe okay. it's P E R L M U T T E R. And I believe he's based in Florida. I'm not sure where. Okay. But I believe he's based in Florida. He's a neurologist, but he works with a lot of Alzheimer's patients. So he reverse engineers their symptoms, trying to figure out what's happening and what's causing it. And he's done a bunch of research on this, and he's finding that uric acid is a culprit. And most doctors aren't aware of it. So look him up. I would I would do a search on on Dr. Perlmutter and uric acid, and you'll get information. This is reversible for her. And uh, okay, it's, it's about her gut and, and too much sugar is what okay. I'm getting. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing You're your welcome. gift. We feel so You're blessed. You're welcome. You. Take care. All right. And OH, I am. OH, baby. I O. Yeah. That's the chair for the Ohio State University where I went to school, where I'm a graduate of. So that's what she was doing with that. Okay, let's go back to the phones and let's see who's next. I believe it's Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Are you there? Vanessa. Okay. Well, let's go to Katie then, and I'll try Vanessa again in a minute. Hi, Katie. Are you there? Hi. Yeah. Hi, Julie. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I sure can. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm terrific. Thanks. Where are you located? Um, I'm calling from San Diego. 
Oh, poor baby. I'm so sorry you live in such an awful place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's actually been really nice here. <laughs> As people are talking about blizzards um, in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, do you, have a, you have a question for me? Yeah. Um, I was wondering um, if you could give me a scan. Um, I just had some really weird symptoms start about, like, five months ago um, after a long run. And primarily, yeah. I think it's, like, circulation, um, but also gut and bladder issues as well. Okay. What What are your symptoms? Um, just kind of, like, uh, my heart rate is going a little too fast, uh, just having trouble digesting, uh, frequent urination. Okay. All right. How young are you, Katie? I'm uh, 26. Okay. You sound young. Okay. All righty. Let me get you on my radar. Let's see what's going on. And uh, okay. and then we'll take it. I talked to somebody today. I swear, I thought this woman was like 23, 24. She told me she was 59. I thought, whoa, what are you doing? Because she, she just, she sounded like you. It was amazing. She was a client. And I said, I, said, I thought you were going to tell me that you were in your early or mid 20s so that was fun okay got you shooting energy yeah you're really inflamed okay so let me get the inflammation yeah. calm down have you noticed anything else in that five months was it after you got a shot or was it after anything else that you went on a vacation or it was anything um it was actually after a, a long run in really hot weather um, probably mm. too hot. Um, but I did have a couple rounds of antibiotics earlier in the mm-hmm. year mm-hmm. Um, for sinus infection and yeast infection. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did they give you a penicillin shot by any chance or an antibiotic shot? Uh, no, not not a shot. Um, okay. But, yeah, I took um, amoxicillin. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I keep getting something about a shot. So I don't know what that is. But what I'm doing is I'm clearing out the, um, because there's heavy metals in you again. What I was talking about earlier, you may have heard, Katie, imagine two big magnets. They're (laughs) joined together. They're going up and down your body. They pull out the metallic particulates. I've got that going on. And uh, do the gut biome test. You may have heard me talk about it. If you email me, Julie at AskJulieRyan.com, I'll send you a link. It's a little bit of a discount on it, Katie. And it's going to tell you what the ecosystem is of your gut. And more importantly, it's going to tell you here are your superfoods. Incorporate these into your diet. Here are the foods for you to avoid. And here's everything else. Eat this a lot. Eat this a little. Anybody that's listening, if you want the link, just email me, Julie at AskJulieRyan.com. We'll send you the link. And um, get that done, Katie, and then that's going to help you know what to eat. Anytime we're on antibiotics or steroids, it just whacks our gut and has so many different cascade of things that can happen. It gives us an inflammatory situation in our gut, which can affect hormones. The cell membranes get tough, trying to keep out perceived invaders. And, you know, it can let our hormones not nourish the cells and vitamins and nutrients and stuff. So that would be my first thing I would suggest. In the meantime, I've calmed down the inflammation, so I hope that makes you feel better. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you, you think, are so uh, welcome. Doing some sort of heavy metal testing? Yeah, I w- did you hear me talking about heavy metals yeah. earlier? Get get on some glutathione uh, and no. um, and cruciferous okay. vegetables. Glutathione's an amino amino acid okay. that will help, and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli. One of our earlier callers was saying, maybe before you joined, was saying that she's been craving broccoli. And I crave broccoli. I eat broccoli pretty much every day when I'm home. I love broccoli. I buy these gigunda okay. packages of it at Costco. You can buy frozen, and it's orga- organic, <laughs> and it's really good. So hope that helps. Hope All you feel right. better. All right. Yeah, thank okay. you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, let's try Vanessa again. Hi, Vanessa. Are you there? 
Vanessa. You gotta unmute, girl. If you wanna chat. Oh, okay. Time for a break anyways. When we come back, we're gonna talk to Angela. So Angela, get ready, get off mute. You're listening to the Ask Julia Ryan Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We've got Angela on the line. Hi, Angela. Hi, Julie. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Please tell everybody where you're located. I'm in North Carolina. North North Carolina. Well, terrific. You got a question for me? I do. Um, I'm wondering if you could scan me, if you have time. Um, I A little history is uh, I feel like I'm playing whack-a-mole with uh, trying to be... I'm very preventative. I eat organically. I have been year, for years trying to figure out all these problems that I've had, and it usually is in the female department with uh, fibrocystic breasts and really painful periods, and that was early on. Um in my period, you know, in, as a young person. And then I just, it was always shifting and um, worked into migraines. So I'm always, like, chasing symptoms and trying to figure it out. But re- currently, I mean, I eat organically. I'm on bioidenticals. I've been on those for a few years. Um, but I feel like I feel a lot in my body that I can feel when I'm off and I can usually, you know, figure out where it's at. But... Um, I feel like my hormones are off right now, and I wanted to know if you are picking up anything else. I have some suspicions about other things, but I would like you to scan me if that's possible. Yeah, sure. Sure. Here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading over to you in North Carolina. All right, got you. All right. Are you exposed to mold? Do you have mold exposure? Have you, have you had a water leak in your home or, or your office or... Does your home um, or well, office smell musty? No, but a few years ago when we redid our master bath, there was mold behind the, so there was a leak at some point. And we thought we, you know, we gutted it, you know, like used a hum- dehumidifier in there for weeks and then went in and put all new stuff in and um, sealed it up. And I have told my husband, something's going on because I'm still getting migraines, and um, and I feel like I'm the only one, you know, it's happening to. Uh, do you feel like there's still, um, could you scan the home and see if there's something secretly, like we're, we're not experiencing anything that we know of? Yeah, the best thing, Angela, what I'm doing is I'm clearing the mold out of your system. A couple of things. First of all, okay. get on my calendar so we can do an hour together, and I'll scan your home. And I we'll am. go through it. Yeah, we'll go through each room. Your, oh, yeah, I'm on yours, but not so many. Yeah. And okay. I think well, that I am fighting something. Else. But you know, you know the trick. Your confirmation email. If you check the, click on the reschedule button periodically, yeah. it will show you people yeah. who reschedule and it happens every week so a lot of times you can get in really quickly so that's number one number two get an air purifier in your bedroom and run it run it all day run it at night if you can stand the noise wear plugs if you need to that's going to help a lot in the meantime i'm clearing the mold out of your system you're being exposed to mold and it's it's molds an endocrine disruptor and there are a lot of people that are super allergic to mold. It's like close to 30% of the population, Angela. I'm one of them. I can walk in a room. I can tell you instantly if there's a mold problem. My husband, Tim, is oblivious. He's like, no, no symptoms. I can usually smell 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 everything. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that mold pores from when we released them, basically we shut that room down as soon as we saw that. And we did every, you know, it wasn't in a huge area, but I was like, this is kind of pushing it for the, you know, when you go online and say, don't really go after it yourself if it's this much. We were right at the line, but we were so careful, but we could have released it into the system. And we're just, you know, and it's been, it's been years. It's been like six years, but I, I, that's, I've been suffering during that. And I, it is, I do think it's messing my hormones up because I'm on bioidenticals and I, I'm watched 
and I, I really am in touch with my body, like, like, hey, this is off, and I'm pretty good at it, and yeah, I really feel like something else is in there. So do you feel like, do you feel like, are you getting the sense, because I, I mean, I know you can't scan the whole house, but are you getting the sense that it's active, or this is released from before, and it's kind of just circulating, and, and the air purifier would nip it, or... No, that's why I want to do a whole hour with you because this is active mold. It may yeah. be not just in the okay. bathroom that you remodeled. It may be in other areas of the house. That's why I want you for an hour because we can go okay. through the whole house yeah. and I can scan the house. That's perfect. The, the thing about the endocrine okay. disruption is my late doctor, Dr. Truss, who got me well from having yeast overgrowth, and I grew up in a house that had mold in it, and none of my siblings okay. had an issue, but I did. Because I'm a mold, I'm right. like the canary in the coal mine, like you. We were very, very, very sensitive yeah. to it. Um, he would tell me, Dr. Truss would tell me that he could do a blood draw of a young, fertile-aged woman, and her estrogen levels would be perfect. And then he said, I'd do a vaginal swab, and her vaginal cells look like those of a postmenopausal 90-year-old woman that hadn't seen estrogen in decades. So he said, so I figured out that the cell oh, wow. membranes get tough when they're in an immune response and they're keeping out the invaders, right. which is all well and good, okay. but it also keeps out the hormones and the vitamins and the minerals and the nutrients and stuff. And that always stuck with me. Yeah. And so, yeah. That you makes got, total sense. That's it does. Sense. And I've never read that anywhere else. And I've never heard anybody else talk about it, Angela, but he taught me that and he was a he was a professor at Cornell for Cornell Medical School. He was yeah. a, a Cornell internist. Um, you know, he was graduated from there, and then he was a professor there later in his career. And so he liked to teach, and, you know, I like to find out stuff. Right. So that always stuck that's with me, I believe. Yeah. yeah I believe that's what's going on sorry. with I mean, you. that's great information. Well, yeah. I appreciate it so much because I know a lot about the endocrine system. I have a dad with type 1 diabetes and my daughter so uh, is type 1 diabetic. And I, I just know something is disrupting me. And I I believe you wholeheartedly. So uh, I'm, I'm not on until May. And I've been re um, trying to reschedule, you know, doing the buttons. But it's only been a few days. So I'll keep trying. And okay. I really appreciate well, you. Well, I look really forward to I look forward to getting you for a whole hour. Hope you feel better. I cleaned the mold. I got the mold Thanks. out of your system in the short run. So, okay. Thanks Take so care, much. Angela. All right, everybody. That's it for this week. That went fast. And to those of you that I didn't get on, please call back next week and let me know. I didn't get you on, and I will take you first. I promise. To all of you who are listening, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm really looking forward to my company. I'll post some pictures online, so that'll be fun of, uh, of our adventures. We're going to the NASA Museum on Saturday, so I'll, I'll send you pictures of the shuttle and the Apollo rockets and all of that. And in the meantime, have a great week. Be sure to follow Julie on Instagram and YouTube at Ask Julie Ryan. And like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. To schedule an appointment or submit a question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com. This show is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be medical, psychological, financial, or legal advice. Please contact a licensed professional. The Ask Julie Ryan Show, Julie Ryan and all parties involved in producing, recording, and distributing it assume no responsibility for listeners' actions based on any information heard on this or any Ask Julie Ryan shows or podcasts.